All right, hello, hello, and welcome to lesson nine of unit three, Aeros day two, the domestic macroeconomic goals, where we've been looking at the goal of low inflation, which is where the general level of prices increase at a rate of two to 3% on average over time. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how to calculate inflation using CPI. And then after that, we'll be looking at the differences between demand inflation and cost inflation. So the key facts being here is that demand inflation is always from excessive aggregate demand side pressures and cost inflation is always from adverse supply side conditions that lead businesses to increase their prices. So our key knowledge today is the measurement of the inflation rate using the consumer price index or CPI, including the difference between the headline and underlying or core rate of inflation and the causes of inflation, including demand inflation and cost inflation. So I'm looking attention as it has been all along to understand the impact of changing economic activity on the domestic macroeconomic goals, low inflation in this case, and success criteria is that you can calculate CPI using, in, you can calculate inflation using CPI, you can distinguish between the headline and underlying rate of inflation, and you can outline causes of demand and cost inflation. So first up, how we calculate inflation rates. So the CPI is essentially a invisible basket of over 100,000 goods and services in 11 different categories that are all weighted for their relative importance that basically just tracks how much the prices of those goods and services change over time and essentially gives it a score where a base year is 100 and every year after that, it, if it increases, the number will be higher than a 100. So we can compare how much prices have increased between each year. Essentially, it tracks the same goods, group of goods and services to see how much their cost has changed over time. So if we look at this and this example that I've gotten from the RBA, we have to better understand how inflation is calculated, um, we can use an example, in this example, um, to calculate inflation for a basket that has two items in it, books and childcare, the formula would be the following. So inflation is the price in year two minus the year, price in year one over the price in year one times 100. So in this case here, in this books example here, the prices are actually 20 and $20.50 as my picture takes over some of them. So we'd have 20.5 minus 20 over 20, in this case, would end up with 0.5 over 20 times 100, and 0.5 over 20 is 2.5% for inflation. Numbers you'd get in a SAC or an exam are gonna be much simpler than that. They're gonna be easy to work out. Often you'll be able to work it out just by looking at the numbers. You'll know exactly the percentage they've increased, and you'll be able to work out what the inflation rate actually is. Alongside this, in terms of calculating inflation, annual inflation simply adds up how much prices have increased over 12 months. It's usually the four quarterly inflation rates all added together. Whereas sometimes you'll get asked about an annualized rate of inflation. What an annualized rate is, is an annualized rate takes one quarter and makes it equivalent to a year. So when you take one quarter to make it equivalent to a year, what you do is times it by four. And so in this case, if we had our inflation rate before, if we pretended that was for a quarter, if we had 2.5% as quarter one, and we want to annualize that, what we'd do is times it by four, and that would be a 10% annualized rate of inflation. So if you ever have to annualize something, it just means making it equivalent to a year. Then with our headline and underlying inflation, headline inflation is simply the raw inflation rate created by measuring changes in CPI. It's just the exact raw data based on those price changes. Underlying or core inflation, however, removes the impact of any volatile price changes to gain a more accurate indication of how inflation would be impacting the average person. So for example, in 2022, inflation rates were largely comprised of increases in house prices, fuel prices, and commodity prices. If they increase so extremely, we need to take them out to get a more accurate indication because these change in prices will not affect everyone equally. Similarly, we've had in massive increases in say the price of meat. If you're a vegetarian person, that impact doesn't impact that doesn't impact you as much and therefore the inflation rate may not be directly applicable to you. So anything too extreme, the RBA likes to take out to give you an underlying inflation rate that gives you a more accurate indication of how inflation may be impacting the average person. Then we have the causes of demand inflation and cost inflation. So demand inflation refers to when excessive levels of aggregate demand cause widespread shortages and put upward pressure on prices. What that means is essentially when there is not enough supply for the amount of demand that there is, consumers try and outbid each other and that drives prices up. You see it with housing a lot of the time when interest rates were at their record lows, when the cash rate was 0.1, 
people were able to borrow money and demand housing. And therefore that was really driving up house prices because people were trying to outbid each other to get the houses that they wanted. So anytime aggregate demand increases faster than aggregate supply can maintain or keep up, demand inflation will occur because people will drive up prices. And then lastly, we've got cost inflation. So cost inflation is an aggregate supply side inflation that refers to when businesses pass on increases in their cost of production to consumers through higher prices. For example, when wages increase, like they did uh, in 2022, wages went up by 5.3%. Um, this means that businesses have a higher cost of production and therefore they're likely to increase their selling prices to protect their profit margins. So we've also had a lot of supply side issues in the past few years where supply chains have been damaged and because that's going to drive up the price of resources for businesses, they have a higher cost of production and therefore that is going to drive up their selling prices. You can see it in raw materials like timber and anything for construction, steel, etc. The prices of those raw materials have gone up significantly. So therefore cost inflation has occurred because they then have to pass on that increased cost to consumers. So that is it for how to calculate inflation and then also headline and underlying inflation rates, as well as the um, differences between demand and cost inflation. If you have any questions about these at all, feel free to leave a comment below or email me, sean at the running economy.com. We've just got one more lesson to go in this topic, which is all about the consequences of not achieving the goal of low inflation. And then you'll be left on your own if you're using my booklet to do some research into recent aggregate demand and aggregate supply side indicators that have impacted the domestic macroeconomic goals. Hopefully in 2023, I'll have time to make a video around the time you've been doing this topic that analyzes all of those as well with the most up-to-date data. On that, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Goodbye.